Okay, so the way this is going to work is we're going to look at a particular step question and then I'm going to try and talk about it a bit, talk about the ideas in it, solve it, and then we might have a bit of time at the end to chat. Um, throughout, please feel free to ask questions either in the chat or ask questions, um, you know, like unmute yourself and, and ask them you know, with your voice if you want. Um, and Israel will, will try and answer any questions in the chat or else let me know and I'll you know stop what I'm doing and, and try and explain it better if I mess something up. Also, um, chances are I'll make some stupid mistake like two plus two is six um, and feel free to like stop me and uh, <laughs> let me know because that could cause confusion. Okay, um, so the question we're going to do, um, as I think you will have seen a bit anyway, is this one, 2012, step two, question two, and it's about polynomials. Um, can everyone see the screen okay? Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to take uh, <laughs> no response is a good response. Grant, okay, so this is the very first bit of the question, okay? Um, if P and Q are polynomials of degree M and N respectively, what is the degree of P of Q of X? Okay, so let's just break this down for a second. We need to um, understand what is the degree of a polynomial. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is define such a thing. So a polynomial, as you're probably aware at this point, looks something like this. Um, P of x is equal to a n x to the n plus a n minus one x to the n minus one plus a one x plus a naught. Now, x is our variable here. So it, it moves about, you know, over whatever range we're working, maybe the real line, for example. So if I put in three, then I'll calculate a n, which is just some number, um, times three to the power of n, and then plus this next coefficient times three to the n minus one, all the way down to plus a one times three plus a nothing. Ah, it's, um, 2012, step two, question two. Okay, 12, S2, Q2. Um, if, if you need to look it up, there is a, um, oh, there, third one on the PDF as well. Okay, um, there's also a very, very, very good step database of literally every question that they've ever asked. Um, that's online and you can search it by, or you can find it on Google just by searching that. Um, okay, so this is, this is what a polynomial is. Um, you can define it in different ways and, and if you do a math degree it'll probably you probably see a different or a slightly more sophisticated definition but this will this will work for now um so we call the coefficients a n a n minus one dot 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 a one a nothing a zero and um the degree um does anyone know what the degree of the polynomial is i'm sure someone must Highest power of x, lovely. Okay, so to be to be clear, it's the power that is the highest power, if you know what I mean. So in this case, it's n. Which is the, like, the, the high, yeah, the, the highest power to which we raise x. Can everyone read my writing okay? If not, then I can make it bigger or <laughs> more legible or maybe. Um, I'll just check the chat. Fine. Excellent. Okay. okay. Good. So I just want to talk quickly. I'm sure you probably, Claire has probably gone through this earlier, but the stem of a step question is this very first bit that they're asking us. Okay. So this is the entire step question here. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Um, so that I can get the whole sheet in. So there are kind of two parts to this. There's part one and part two. 
And then there's also this little bit at the very, very start called the stem of the question. And this is usually something that will probably apply to the rest of the question. And it's helpful to sort of get you into the mode of the question and think about it and solve it at the start. Sometimes it's not worth that many marks and it's just, you know, about getting into it. Other times it's actually really quite important. And then the other bits are relatively easy. It sort of it varies from question to question, but um, it's quite common to see in, in a step question, sort of a little preamble um, that may or may not have a question in it. Um, so in this case, um, I'm just going to cover this up. The first bit is if P and Q are polynomials of degree M and N respectively, what's the degree of P of Q of X, All right? So let's, we have P of X has degree M. So let's just write it as AM X to the M plus AM minus one x to the n minus one plus dot 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 i want x plus a naught okay it's it's always helpful to sort of be explicit um in in writing down things at the very start of a question now q of x has degree n so let's write it like this q of x and i'm just going to label my coefficients differently um it's helpful to try and pick sensible notation and i'm going to call them bn x to the n plus b n minus one x to the n minus one all the way down to b one x plus b naught. Okay. Um, so now we have to think about this thing. Okay, so considering we've, we've been so explicit in writing down what these polynomials are, we can sort of do it all in one go here. So instead of having an input x into our p up here, we have the input q of x, okay? So we've got a m, and instead of x to the m, we've got q of x all raised to the power of m. And then we've got a m minus one times q of x times m minus one, and so on, all the way down to a one times q plus a naught. Okay, so let's just expand or well, from this, okay, we want to be able to try and reason what is the highest power. We're asking for the degree of P of Q and that is the highest power of X that will appear here. Okay, now Q of X to the M looks like, oops, sorry, Q of X to the M looks like, ooh, bn x to the n. I'm going to skip the bn minus one term, if that's okay. b1x plus b0, all to the m. And this will have an x to the nm term. Okay, because it has, if we, if we imagine this is written as lots and lots of brackets. Okay, b1x plus b0 times another one of these brackets. and dot, 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 like M of these brackets, then whenever we multiply the first term in each bracket um, together with all the other first terms, we're gonna get a term that has BN to the power of M because there's M brackets times X to the N all to the power of M because there's M of them. Okay. Now, um, we know from you know in index rules, whatever that you might see in school. So there are other terms here, but I'm going to claim that this is actually the highest power. One. Okay, this is then b n to the m x to the n m. Now let's think about all the other terms because we've still got an awful lot of terms here that I haven't bothered to write down, and we have to be kind of sure that they're not going to be a higher power than n m. Okay. So the best way to think about this is I have to, in multiplying out these brackets, I have to take one term from each bracket, okay? So the best way, the way to get the highest power is going to be to take the highest power from each bracket, okay? Alternatively, if I take some term that isn't the highest power from, from some bracket, say I take B1X instead of BN X to the N, then 
that is going to have a less degree than a lesser degree than if I had taken the bn x to the n. Okay, so I'm sure I'm sure you're pretty comfortable with this. If you're not, please um, stick it in the chat. Okay, so this term here, qx to the m, has degree nm. Okay. Now, um, we have also have to be sure. So we're we're pretty sure that nm is the is the degree of this term. But we have to be sure that the other terms don't have some other higher degree, okay? And sort of by a similar argument, if you think about it, q of x to some lesser power, say n minus one or n minus two or one, for example, if n is bigger than one, then the, the maximum power that we can get is if we take the x to the n from each term, but there's fewer than m of these brackets. So the degree is just going to be less than nm. Okay, so we conclude that the degree of p of q of x is nm. Okay, so it might feel like we've kind of not done much work here because we've sort of thrown away every single term except for the very first one of the very first term of the whole thing. But that's kind of the point of degree. Um, in that we only really care about the highest power and whatever happens to all the lesser powers, we don't really care about, okay? It, it doesn't change the degree, okay? And a good tip for this was the fact that, or a good, the way that, or, let me try that one again. The thing that makes this quite easy to see is the fact that we wrote these polynomials down in a very, um, you know, obvious way. Like we didn't try and write it in roots maybe or, anything, it was just like, this is definitely the highest one, it's the first coefficient. Okay. So that was the stem. And now let's have a look at one. Okay, here we go. So the polynomial P satisfies this particular equation, okay, for all X. Okay, so you might've come across equations versus identities in school. Like for example, you might be asked to solve, I don't know, cos theta equals two, but then prove that sine theta is identical to tan theta cos theta. And the difference here is that this is this holds for every single theta, this identity here. Whereas this equation, you're solving it. So there are only certain thetas that might work. Okay, so we've been told that this works for every single x. So we're not trying to solve for x here or anything like this. We're told that this is always true and try and find the p that work. Okay, but first we have to find the, show that p must be of degree one and find all polynomials p that, that will work. Okay, so let's do this again. Okay, is everyone okay so far? Do you got any questions? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, cos theta equals two is impossible. Um, I well, ah, well, it's impossible if theta is real. Um, if theta is imaginary, I believe it's possible, but. Um, Yes, yeah, sorry, that, that, was, that, that was pretty stupid. Um, let's just say 0 0.2. Um, good spot. Um, but in that case, it's, it still illustrates the point, though, that only some theta may or may not work. In this case, none of them do. Or, well, neither do, but it's 0 0.2, infinitely many do. But it's still not every single theta. Okay. Um, fine. So we've been told, we've got this equation, p of p of p of x minus 3p of x is equal to minus 2x for all x. This is this is the symbol for all x here. Okay, or, or, or sorry, for all the upside down a. 
Um, you, you might see this. Um, there are other bits of notation that I'll probably use here, and I'll just explain them as I go. Okay, you don't have to use them, and you don't have to use them in step or anything, but they're often very handy. Okay, so this is for all x. Now, we've been asked to show that the degree is one. The degree of p has to be one here. All right, so the possible options are let, let, let the degree of p be n. Okay, where n is some number. Now, we know that n is in a certain set that I'm going to notate by n subscript zero, which is just zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so it's all the counting numbers plus zero as well. Okay, this symbol here is, is a member of, okay. Um, if the notation never gets too heavy, just, just stop me. Okay, so we're going to say, we're going to let it be n, and our goal is to show that n must be one. Okay, so first of all, we realize that the if the degree of p is n, then the degree of p of p of x is n squared. Okay, because that, that's what we did in the stem. Okay, where instead of p of q with n and m, it's just p of p with n and n, and n times n is n squared. Okay, which means that the degree of p of p of p of x with lots and lots of brackets, possibly too many, is n cubed. Okay, so we know that the degree of this term is n cubed. Uh, it looks like. It's not, okay, there we go. Um, we know that the degree of this term is n. Even though we've multiplied by minus three, we haven't multiplied by x, for example. So we haven't changed the degree, okay? Say this was x times p of x, then the degree would now be n plus one because the highest power was say some a n x to the power of n, but we've multiplied by x, so now it's a n x to the n plus one, okay? But three doesn't change the degree, so this still has degree n. And this has degree one. The highest power of x there is just one, okay? Because x is just on its own. Um, the screen seems to be lagging a little bit for me. Um, I do apologize. And if it, if it completely freezes, then obviously let me know. Um, okay, so we have the degree over here is n cubed and the degree of this is n. Um, um, we need the degree on the left-hand side to be the same as the degree on the right-hand side. That's absolutely critical. And, that, and that's sort of the key point that you need to sort of realize in order to solve this question. Okay, obviously, if the degree over here is one and the degree over here is two, it's not, it, it, it cannot be the same for all X. Okay. Um, so what we need is that N cubed or N, is, um, when, when we combine them like this, the degree is one. So we notice that if n is greater than or equal to two, then n cubed is, well, for example, eight or 27, but in particular, it's bigger than one, okay? And it's actually, well, okay, so it's bigger than n, which is bigger than one, okay? And this is quite important here because n cubed bigger than n means that the degree of the left hand side is now n cubed because that's the highest power because it's bigger than n and bigger than one means that we definitely do not have a degree one polynomial on the left hand side okay so the degree of i'm just going to write like this the degree of the left hand side perhaps it'd be better like, i'm just doing that for brevity it would be probably better in the actual exam to write the degree of the left hand side in words the degree of the left hand side is bigger than one, so we can't have this. Um, so I'm, I'm going to write this symbol, and that's for contradiction, okay? Which means, i.e., can't have n bigger than or equal to two. Okay, good. So we, we've got rid of all of them except for zero and one. So we just need to check zero. If n is zero, then n cubed is zero. 
So the degree of the left-hand side is actually zero this time. Which is not one, and again, we've got a contradiction. Okay. And finally, we just check if n equals one, then n cubed is one. So the degree of the left-hand side can be one, right? It can also be zero, um, or probably can also be zero, like, like depending on what the coefficients are, this might cancel with that, for example, because they're both degree one, and then we'll have something, or the x coefficients might cancel, and then we only have something with degree zero on the left-hand side, but it's possible, okay? But we've eliminated all the other cases, so we know that degree of p is one. Fine. Okay, now we have to find all the p's that work. Um, so does anyone have any ideas for how you might attack this next bit of the problem? Okay, getting some sensible suggestions in there. Let P be X plus B or <laughs> X plus C. Um, yes, exactly. And then equate coefficients. These, these are the key ideas. Good, exactly. So um, we're gonna let P of X be AX plus B. We're assuming this polynomial is over the real numbers. If you don't know what the real numbers are, then don't worry. Um, but this means that we're going to let a and b just be real numbers, okay? Like they're just on the number line, okay? Again, I'm using this funny looking e type symbol here. It looks like maybe a bit like an epsilon. Um, that means it's a member of as up there, and r is our symbol for the real line, the number line, okay? Um, Then, P of P of P of X, that's too much fun to say, is gonna be P of, no, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do it in stages just to be sure because I always mess up algebra. So it's A of P of X plus B, and then P is applied to all of this. Okay, so it's P of A of AX plus B, plus B, which is the same as A times all of that, plus B. Okay, good. Um, and let's just expand this out. And then, then we get A cubed X. That's the only coefficient of, the, of X. And then the other terms are gonna be the constants that don't depend on, or aren't multiplying any X. Um, and they're gonna be plus a squared b, oh dear, plus a squared b, because we've got an a b here times an a, and then we've got an a b and a b. Okay, if I've made a mistake there, do stop me. Um, okay, and then this means that our entire left-hand side looks like a cubed x plus a squared b plus a b plus b, minus three times AX plus B. And then the right-hand side is minus two X. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to equate coefficients as someone in the chat said. So that's A cubed minus three A times X plus A squared B plus AB minus two B. And this is equal to minus two X. So equating coefficients, we've got a cubed minus 3a is minus 2, and a squared b plus ab minus 2b is nothing. Okay, and I'm going to label these equations 1 and 2. It's always good to be clear when on your working out. Um, okay, now, we have to find A and B such that both of these equations are satisfied, okay? So I'm gonna actually attack the second one first, okay? So equation two is A squared B 
plus AB minus 2B is zero. And I'm just going to factor a B out. OK, so we have to find all of the ways that we can satisfy this equation. OK, and then we know that at least one of these must hold. Right. And then we're going to compare it to all the ways that the first equation can be satisfied and see how they match up. OK, so we could have B is zero and A arbitrary, because no matter what A is, if B is zero, then this is definitely going to look like a zero. Or we could have this thing to be equal to zero, which implies that solving the quadratic equation, we've got A equals minus one or A equals two. Nope, A equals one or A equals minus two. Nice, can't solve a quadratic. Okay, good. Um, so we know that at least one of these things must hold because if A is one, it doesn't matter what B is, we'll still get zero, sim if A is minus two. All right, but we could also have B is zero and A is one, or B is zero and, and A is minus two. Obviously, we couldn't have A is one and A is minus two. And um, so now let's look at equation one. A cubed minus three A is minus two A, or minus two, sorry. Okay, so look at this and you see, well, okay, B doesn't get involved here at all, right? And what we'd want to do is solve this, this um, polynomial, literally just find the roots of it, okay? Now, I'm gonna try and be, take a little bit of a shortcut because I'm kind of done if one and minus two don't work at all. So I'm gonna check them. A equals one, I've got one minus three is minus two, so that works. A equals minus two, I've got minus eight plus six is minus two, so that also works. Okay, so I actually know that one and minus two are both roots of this thing. Okay, I'm gonna carry on. I'll try and put this here so that you can see the end of that. Okay, so we've got this cubic. Okay, now there's absolutely nothing wrong with just going straight, straight at this and you know dividing it out by uh, like doing something like this: a minus one, a plus two and then doing your polynomial division that you've probably seen in A level. I'm actually not gonna do that because I think it'll be a little bit quicker if I try and figure out what the factor is gonna be just, just by looking at it. Okay, I'm gonna talk you through that. Um, it's just a handy skill to have um, if you have it. Okay, so we have some factor here. Okay, oh, sorry. We have some linear, which means degree one factor. So it's just going to be a plus something. It could be a negative thing, so it could be a minus one, right? But we can sort of figure out what it is, okay? Because we need an a in here, because then we get a cubed. And then what we want to do is have the a squared terms cancel. And that should give us what we need, okay? So we get an a squared term here from this a times that a. So we need the other a squared term, which is this term times this term, whatever this is gonna be, to be minus one, right? Because then when we multiply this out, we get an a, a minus a squared and a plus a squared, so they cancel. And we don't have an a squared on the left, right, uh, left hand side. Uh, or minus two, sorry, have I, have I made a mistake? the term equals two. Ah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. You can just spot that you need you know minus two and minus one to be two exactly. Um, and then you can just double check that you haven't made a mistake and compare the a terms, for example. So you're going to get a minus a and a minus two a, which is minus three a. Perfect. And then minus two times minus one is two. Okay. So you can do it with anyone. I just did it with the a squared ones. Okay. Good. So actually. We find the other factor. We know that a cubed minus three a plus two is the same as a minus one squared times a plus two. So this is only satisfied if a is one or a is minus two. Okay, so we need one of these things to hold. 
okay? Because if, if neither of these holds, then equation one doesn't hold, which is this thing. And then we have an equation coefficients and it doesn't work, okay? So we know that we need this one or this one. But then going back to equation two, we already showed that if one of these thing, things works, then B can be whatever it wants, okay? Because if I let A be one, this factor, this quadratic factor here is zero, and then B can be zero, it can be one, it can be pi, it can be 64, it can be whatever you want, okay? And, and the second equation will also be satisfied. So B can be arbitrary, and A has to be one or minus two. So P of X is either X plus B, or minus two X plus B, where B is any number in the real numbers, any real number. Okay, so we've actually found infinitely many, we found un uncountably infinitely many, if you've, if you've met um, that term, but if not, don't worry. We found infinitely many polynomials that will work. Um, but, but we've sort of put conditions on, on what the, the coefficient of x needs to be. Okay, any problems with this so far? Um, seems so, okay. Um, so this is now part two. Um, find all polynomials that satisfy blah, something else. Oh, I just hit the, I don't know, that wasn't a good idea. Um, that satisfy this new equation for all x. So this looks pretty similar to part one. Um, so what do you think my first step should be here? Okay. Just stick ideas in the chat or unmute yourself if you'd like. Um, but what do I need to do first? Good. Yes, exactly. Um, for finding the degrees um, of, 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 well, finding the degree of the left-hand side. We, we already know the degree of the right-hand side, right? So we've got this, I'm just, I'm just gonna rewrite the equation for us here. So thankfully we don't have P applied to itself three times this time, it's only twice. Um, okay, so the degree over here, is four, right? So we know that we need the left-hand side to have degree four too, four as well. Maybe I should say that, not four too. Um, okay, so let's try and do the same thing. We're just gonna let it be some n, again, in the natural numbers, uh, plus zero. And let's think about this. Okay, so if n is zero, implies that the degree of the left-hand side, this is zero, and then that's zero, and that's zero, so the whole thing is zero, i.e. it's just some constant. Well, that doesn't work. Um, and then if n is one, then the degree of the left-hand side is at most one, at most one, and at most one. Ah. At most one, at most two, and at most one. Okay, so that also doesn't work. Okay, so it's, this one will look like maybe ax plus b all squared. Um, so we, we, we would get an x squared term, but it doesn't match the x to the four. If n is greater than or equal to three, then the degree of P of P of X, we agreed was three squared, which is nine. The degree of P of X all squared would be three times two. Okay, because we've got some, ah, ah. Okay, uh, I've sort of messed that up. Um, it's gonna be greater than or equal to three squared equals nine. Okay, sorry, because it's n greater than or equal to three. Sorry, that's my bad. Um, and then the degree of p of x squared is gonna be equal to two n, 
which is again is going to be greater than or equal to six. Um, and then the degree of this one is three, this, this p of x term, p of x term. So if n is greater than or equal to three, then the degree of the left hand side uh, must be nine. Okay, because the p of x squared, or must be greater than or equal to nine. Sorry, I keep thinking greater than or equal to three is three. Um, must be greater than or equal to nine. Um, because this term can't really affect the highest term of this term. So the degree of this is less than that. So it can't affect it. And same, the degree of this is less than the degree of that. So this term can't change the degree either. So the degree is determined by this term. And we've figured out that the degree of this thing is n squared, which is definitely bigger than four anyway. So we figured out that n equals two. And again, you can verify that that must work. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. Let p of x be ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b, and c are in the reals, okay? Um, it's, you, you might notice that I'm trying to always define things whenever I introduce notation, because the person who's reading my answer here doesn't necessarily know what I mean by a, b, and c, okay? Obviously, it's pretty clear in this case. Ah. Um, Yeah, actually, you're right. Yes, it must be. It must be just two, right? Because if it's x b, then this term can't affect it, and that term can't affect it. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, that's that's my fault. Um, someone's just asked a question in the chat there. I'm not sure if you saw it. That if n is one, then the degree of the left hand side is two. I, I was I made a slight mistake there. The degree of this term is two. The degree of this term is one, and the degree of this term is one. So neither of these terms can affect the degree of that term. Um, so they can't affect the degree of the whole of the left-hand side. So it must be two. Yeah, um, good, good spot, well done. Okay. Um, so now we've kind of got to do a bit of an algebra bash. Um, so P of P of X is A of AX squared plus BX plus C all squared because this is like the x in our equation here plus b so that's our this is our new input okay so in step often you'll, you'll find that you, sometimes you just have to sit and do a lot of algebra um it, it really pays to not be scared of it obviously sometimes that there is a neater solution but You've got to sort of trust yourself to be able to work through the algebra sort of safely and relatively painlessly. And I'm not trying to find a mistake. The worst thing is trying to go back through a page of symbols and try and find one stupid mistake that you made, like a sign error. So just try and try and work slowly at the start it would be my main tip for that. Okay. And I don't try and do too big to too big a step in one go. So let's square this. Um best way of trying to square a, a bracket with multiple terms in it is just square each term and then sort of multiply each pair of terms and times it by two okay because if you think about it if we've got this bracket times itself then i'm just gonna write that out here but by the way this is just a little trick obviously you know you can do it okay. well it's not really it's not really a trick it's just exactly how you do it but just to, to avoid thinking about it too much We've got to multiply this term by that term, this term by that term, this term by that term, and then the cross terms are going to be this by that plus this by that. But they're obviously the same pair because multiplication is the same backwards and forwards. We, we call it commutative. So we're actually going to get twice of each cross term. So this is going to be a squared x to the four plus b squared x squared plus c squared. That's me squaring each term plus two times the first time time the second term so that's a b x cubed plus two times a c x squared plus two times b c x um okay um plus b times a x squared plus b x plus c plus c that's just these two terms here okay so i don't want to expand that anymore because i'm not really going to be doing much with it um, 
just want to write it p of x all squared. We, we, we just did this um, up here. a squared x to the 4 plus 2ab x cubed. I'm just going to rewrite it now in descending powers of x, just for neatness. It's just genuinely nicer. Um, now, there are actually two terms with x squared in it b squared plus 2ac x squared plus 2bcx plus c squared. Okay, fine. So now we sort of have the ingredients to go back to our big equation at the top and compare coefficients again. So we've got quite a lot of powers here. We've got 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we've got five equations. So we want to really try and set it out nice and neatly. Neatly, not neatly. Um, of x to the 4. Okay, so we've got only one power of x to the 4 here. I've got a coefficient of x cubed, but it's multiplied by 2. Okay, so we've got a 2a cubed. And over here, we've also got a power of x to the 4, or a, a term that has x to the 4. Um, and this is multiplied by 3. So we've got a 3 times a squared, because that's the coefficient in here. And then the 4p of x can't contribute a term of degree 4. Um, and the coefficient in front of x to the 4 here is just 1. So that's, let's, let's call it equation 3, okay, because I have 1 and 2 on the previous page. Um, of x cubed, we similarly just need to write out the equations. Let me just check what time we're at. Ooh, don't have much time. I've gone a little bit slower than I thought I might. Um, okay. I hope you trust me. I did this question earlier, and um, I've sort of written down all the equations here, so I'm just going to copy them out quickly, and you can verify them yourselves. Okay. Um, the because uh, I, I want to talk about um, how how you'd go about working with them. If you've got any questions or anything, um, you can stick them in the chat here. Okay, so this is just me collecting terms and multiplying the ones from here by two, multiplying the ones from here, the p of x squared term, by three, taking away four times the ones um, just in p of x, and then obviously it's zero, 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 zero up here apart from the one. Um, four abc plus 2b squared plus 6bc. If, if I make a mistake here, do stop me, but I sincerely hope I don't, because that'll be problematic. Um, okay, so we've got five different equations here. Um, and we need to sort of figure out how to satisfy all of them. Okay, that, that's the key here. If we don't, sat, if we maybe satisfy four out of five of these things, then we still haven't done it because the coefficients of the right hand side here would be slightly different. Okay, or, or, or the coefficients of the left hand side wouldn't match up exactly with one, zero, 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 zero. Okay, so we have to figure out how to satisfy all of them. Okay, um, so the first one to attack. Um, I'm just going to rewrite here, was 2a cubed plus 3a squared minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so we can solve this for a. Okay, um, this is just classic a level, like maybe c1 work, oh, or whatever you call it, the, the, sort of the, the first module. Um, just polynomial division, you spot that a equals minus 1 works. Um, because that's minus two plus three minus one. Um, so yeah, five minutes left here. So I'm just going to go a little bit quick. Um, if, if I go too quick, do, do just say, okay. So you can do a polynomial division of this. We know that a equals minus one works. So you can divide this by a plus one, as I'm sure you've done in a level. I'm not going to do it here because I'm starting to run out of time. So I'm just going to tell you that the answer then becomes 
2a squared plus a minus 1, which you can factor to 2a minus 1 times a plus 1. Okay, so that, that's just completely regular polynomial division. Okay, so this means that either a is minus 1 or a is a half. So that's pretty good. Just in one equation, we find conditions on a. Okay, uh, I mean, there's only two possible values for a here. Okay, so now let's go to the next equation, which is 4a squared b plus 6ab equals 0. Okay, let's factor that. ab, um, I'll take a 2 out, gets me 2a plus, yeah, plus 3 is 0. Okay, now, this can never be zero with our with our values of a that we find, because if it's minus one, then this is one, and if it's a half, then it's four. Okay, so this is definitely not zero. Obviously, the two a is definitely not zero, but this all multiplies to zero, so b must be zero. So we're going pretty well. We had a x squared plus b x plus c for p, and now we know that b is definitely zero. And we've got two possible values for A and we've eliminated all the rest of them. So now we just need to figure out what C does. Okay, so let's go to equation five. But remember, even though we're on track, we still have to satisfy all three, all three of the remaining equations. Okay, that, that's quite important. So this equation was 2a squared b plus 4a squared c plus 2ab plus 3b squared plus 6ac minus 4a. But we know that b is zero, so that term disappears, that term disappears, and that term disappears. So now I've got a simpler equation. Um, it's just 4a squared c plus 6ac minus 4a equals zero. Okay, um, I'm going to factor out 2a, and that gets us 2ac plus 3c minus 2 is zero. Now this is not zero, so that means that this must be zero. Okay, so if a is minus one, then this tells it that minus two c plus three c minus two equals zero. So just solving that, like exactly how you would, that gives us that c is two. Um, and if a is a half, which is the only other possible value, then we've got c plus three c is minus two, so c is minus a half. No, nope. is equal to two, so c is just a half. Okay, so, so far we found two values of a, we know exactly that b is zero, and we found a value of c corresponding to each value of a. Okay, so we seem to have got like three candidate, or two candidate polynomials, but we have to check that we satisfy six and seven. Okay, this is this is sort of the place where you might lose two sneaky marks or a few sneaky marks at the end of the step question. Um, oh, we've got one minute. Um, so let's go quickly. So this one, whenever B is zero, all the terms have B in it. So they all go to zero, so that's automatically satisfied. And over here, this one goes, and then I'm gonna ask you to trust me that if, if you fill in A is minus one and uh, if you fill in the corresponding values, so a minus one with c is two, you get zero, and a half with c a half, you get zero. So they're both satisfied. So we've satisfied all of them if p of x is either minus x squared plus two or a half x squared plus a half. Okay, very quickly, does anyone have any questions? <laughs>